This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this example, Charles has the following trade profits and losses. So obviously he's been in business for some time and the year ended 31st of December 21. He has a profit of 32,000. In 22, 25,000. And the year ended December 2023. Something went wrong because he made a massive loss of 84,000. But he also has property income in the year of six. So the question asks us to calculate Charles's taxable income for each of the relevant tax years, assuming that the trade loss is used in the most beneficial way and trade losses will continue for the next few years. Now this is a bit of a hint that you are to look at current year and or previous year before you carry it forward because obviously if he's going to continue making losses you won't get tax relief on that for some time. And we are to assume that the purse allowance of 22, 23 applies in all tax years, that's quite common in these exam questions. So let's have a look at the answer. First thing you do, first thing you do is work out what tax year the accounts are going to be assessed in. Okay, so we're on a current year basis in each of these years. But it's important that you write that out so you know clearly what year everything fits into. So December 21 accounts, the profit of 32 fits into 21, 22, and so on and so forth. Then you set up your pro forma. Years across the top. Pro forma down the side. And this pro forma is an income tax pro forma. And again, you should have done that chapter before you get to, to this stage. You should be doing them in a logical order. What you then need to do is to copy the question into the answer. You see there, all that has been copied. You've copied from the question, both the trading profits and um, the property income. Now we need to also set up a loss memorandum. So the profit, the loss for the year ended 31 December 23. The loss was, I'm just checking with the question, 84,000. Now, <coughs> This is the year of loss. So this would be a current year claim and that's a previous year claim. And you will note that the current year only has income of £6,000 in it. Therefore, it's more than covered by the personal allowance. So if you notice note one here, it says the current year claim against total income 23, 24, would waste the personal allowance and save no income tax because he's not paying any income tax. Hence, there is no claim to be made in the current year. It's not worth it. Okay, and you don't need to because the rule is and or. So you can do either. doesn't really matter. And in which order you like as well. So a carry back claim will also waste the personal allowance. This is true. And again, it's an all or nothing claim. So you have to make a claim in full if you want, but it will generate an income tax refund. Okay, so we're not going to do a current year claim, but we are going to do a previous year claim in 22, 23 of 31,000 all or nothing which leaves us a balance of 53,000 which will then need to be carried forward to be offset against future profits from the same trade. Now you can only do current year and or previous year. This year here is actually irrelevant 
because you can only go back that one year. So that's how you would do a current year or and or a previous year. Now I mentioned earlier that there is a cap that applies that limits the amount of loss relief available against someone's total income. Now this is the loss relief rules that you've got to remember. All right, It's the higher of £50,000 or 25% of a person's adjusted total income. Now, how do we get adjusted total income? This is after deductions from total income, the gross amount of any pension contributions. So it's total income less gross pensions. More details of that in the income tax chapter. That's your adjusted total income. And that's the figure um, that we then multiply by 25%. Now, it's important. This cap does not apply to trade profits within that total income figure. You still need to do that in order to work this out. Okay. But the cap doesn't apply to trade profits. Okay. And there is a note there that the cap will only be tested at the TX level within this section of relief after the total income of a current and or pre, um, a claim for relief for those. Now we've got a lovely illustration here which just shows us how that works. Louise has always prepared accounts to the 31st of March each year in respect of her trade while she also receives employment income of 60000 a year. For the accounting year to March 23, she made a trade loss of £125,000, having made a profit in the year previous year, the year to March 22. Personal apply, allowances apply in both years. We are to compute or work out the taxable income for each of these tax years, assuming loss relief claims against total income are made in both tax years. So we are, it's telling you that you're going to make a claim against total income in both of those tax years. So again, here's across the top in your pro forma, pro forma down the side, pro forma down the side, copy the information into the question. So. Um, we have um, the question into the answer. So we have the profits, and that's the loss year, and then her employment income. Okay, so that's her income, her total income. Let's see what the notes have to say about this. So loss relief claim in 22-23 is capped at 50,000, as this is higher than the adjusted total income, 15,000, which is 60,000 times 25%. So we've applied the rule. There's the rule. Let's just go back to the rule. The cap that limits the amount of loss relief against the total income is the higher of 50,000 or 25% of the adjusted income. So in this situation, it's either 50,000 or 25% of her adjusted income, which is 15. So this is the one that we choose, and that's the one that goes into there. Now in 21-22, the loss relief claim is made in full against the trade profits. So that, can be relieved in full. Because if you remember the rule said it doesn't apply to trade profits within that. But then we still have that cap of 50,000. So that 70,000 is made up of 
two figures. It's made up of the 20,000 tr against trade profits and the cap against her total income. The cap can here be seen, in fact, to be advantageous to Louise as it leaves sufficient total income in both years to absorb the majority of her personal allowances. Some of it's wasted, but you'll notice that the majority of the allowance is used up against the remaining income and therefore she has no taxable income at the end of the day and no tax to pay. The remaining trade loss, that's what we started with, and we've had two claims, so we have 5,000 left that can be carried forward to be used against uh, further trade profit income. Now, one of the reliefs that I explained earlier, mentioned earlier, is against capital gains. So, in order to transfer an income loss into a different tax, i.e. capital gains, there are some conditions, okay? And the main condition is that we have to offset any losses against the current year before we make a claim. So you have to make a claim for trade loss against total income, even if it means you lose all your personal allowance, you still have to make that claim. So in the same year, then a tax player can then offset any remaining loss against the gains in the same year. So you must do an income loss first, and then you can offset that through to uh, capital gains. And it's the lower of, the relevant amount, now this is what's left after you've made that claim. So that's the relevant amount. Or the maximum amount, and this is how you calculate the maximum amount. That's the rule, and you need to remember it. So the trading loss is set against the current year net chargeable gains before considering losses brought forward. Now, I know this is a bit unusual because we're actually dealing with a different tax that we haven't looked at um, if you're following through these lectures in the, the chronological order. Um, so I'm going to try and explain it um, as best I can uh, for that purpose. And there's an important note here that capital losses brought forward are used in the calculation of the maximum amount and may not actually be offset in the current year as the trading loss is set off first followed by the annual exempt amount. If there are still net gains after the annual exempt amount, then brought forward capital losses will be utilised to reduce the gain further. The restriction of offset to a maximum amount of 50,000 or 25% of the ATI does not apply to the offset against capital gains. And as I said before, it's unusual that we're doing a different tax at this point. So it's just a simple example that will help us just to understand how this works. And we'll do capital gains. Um, the lectures, if you follow the, the, the contents, they take place later. So look that when you've done the capital gains, you'll be able to uh, come back to this section and it will help you to understand. So example number three, we have here, Kathy has net gains of 44,000. Now that is her net gains are her gains in the year. of 22, 23, less any losses in the year. 
that's not losses brought forward that's losses in the year because she does have a capital loss brought forward okay so they are used as i said up there they are used in the maximum amount but may not actually be set off against um, um the gains in that year but you need to put them into the calculation and she has training losses remaining of 24000 after she must do that first the claim against total income in the tax year has been made so we're going to have a look at how that um, will look in an, in the model answer so provided an election is made the hot well, because that's what you have to do because you're going between taxes here you're going between income tax and capital gains tax so you need to make an election provided an election is made the whole of the trade loss remaining after the claim against total income can be set off against the gains in 22-23 and that's £24,000 so the entire 24,000 of loss is available for set off against the net gains as it is less than the maximum loss of 40,000 computed as the net gains less capital losses brought forward you must work that out to find so we have a relevant amount of 24,000 and we have a maximum oh, maximum <laughs> amount of 44 which is her current year gains and losses less the loss brought forward okay that's 40 So the entire loss can be available to set off. So the loss of 24 is then applied against the net gains for the year. You can see that there. So that's the figure we've chosen. And please, will you show this? If you've got to do this in an exam question, will you show that calculation? Because that shows the examiner, you know the rules that we looked at earlier. It is, I'm going to go back to the rule to make sure you've got it. There. It is the lower of the relevant amount, which in this case is 24,000, or the maximum amount, which is the gains for the year of 44, less the loss for the year of 4. So those figures show that. It shows the examiner you know what the rules are, and you've then applied them. So that is sent off against the gains in the net gains in the year. Now, the annual exemption amount is 12,300 it is in the rates we will discuss it in more detail in the capital gains chapters and then we can also put in the loss brought forward because it will further reduce her liability to capital gains down to 3,700 pounds <laughs>